Okay, this is the Maya uh, lecture on how to revolve curves and corresponds with this lesson in Unit 4, Arts 23403, Curve Revolution. In this lesson, we will learn how to create an ERBS curve using CV controls, use the grid for visual reference, determine the start and end point for a NURBS curve and its direction, create a revolved NURB surface and uh, using the revolve tool, change the display smoothing shadiness for a NURBS, shading smoothness for a NURB surface, edit a NURB surface by editing its initial profile curve when it is linked to the surface by construction history. You will need the Arts 23403 beginning sculpture demo files. Click on the down arrow and go to download as before and open up that zip file and let's go to Maya and we're going to set the project to where you unzipped that zip file so this is going to be the common uh, method of doing the demos in every unit. Okay so uh, curves are generally used to create NURB surfaces. One of the ways we can do that is with Revolve. Um, we're going to go to the modeling menu set if you're not already and we're going to use some of the NURBS commands in there. Uh, you can open NUR uh, curve tools if you want to. It doesn't really matter whether you open this or not. It just has some reference in it. But um, you can just work off a blank scene if you want to. So I'm going to make a profile curve using the um, EP curve tool. You can see in the front view there's some labels here. Um, and I'm going to start with the EP curve tool. I'm going to go to create uh, curves. There they are. EP curve tool. And for now I don't need to really set any options. So um, once I start clicking points, it will start creating those CVs, those control vertices. When I click two, I get a straight line as if it were a polygon. When I click the third one, that's when I start getting the curve. So we can do four and five here. And then press enter when you're done clicking your curves and that completes, clicking your CVs and that completes the curve according to the CVs that you've created. Now CV curve is the same thing in a different flavor. So I'm going to create CV curve and again I'm going to go one, two, and actually on the third one I get a straight line also. But then once I do the fourth one what it does is it gives me the average between those points. So do a couple more points and press enter. Um, the EP curve hits the points that you click. The CV curve approximates between them. And I'm actually just going to um, create one more here that's not mentioned in the tutorial. I'm going to go to curve, um, Bezier curve, and this will behave a little bit more like an illustrator curve in that you can click and drag out the handles and actually use the handles to manipulate the curve in and out. As such, uh, I've had mixed results with the with the Bezier curve doing revolves and other extrusions and lofts and such. So uh, just be careful with it. Feel free to use it. Um, you can also import curves from from Illustrator. Just so you know, if you're an Illustrator junkie, um, you can pull your vector paths in and use those in the same way that you use these curves. So, um, looking at both curves in component mode,
you can see um, depending on what you have selected whether you have parm points or curve points or control vertices you can see different versions of um, visualizing this. Let's go to the status bar and see if I can find this. Yeah, click on right next to component mode, click on this little, I don't know what you want to call it, slider I guess, to open up um, some different selection methods for your component mode. Make sure you're on component mode or you might not see this the same way. So this is Parm points, this is points, and is this the one I want? Pivot? No, not pivot. Line, face, hall. There's the other one I want. And that's hall. So um, just different vi ways to visualize. Uh, you can see um, when you turn on the hall on an EP curve, you can see what the same curve would have looked like if it were a CV curve. And you can grab any of those points and manipulate those in the normal way. These are just regular components. There we go. It's just being a little tricky on me. Okay, so now same thing with the CV curve. With my selection masks turned on, I can see the hull as well as the points. These are the points that, uh, th these are what the points would have looked like if I had drawn this as an EP curve. So they're really the same thing, just the way that they're made is different. And you can manipulate them in either way. Now turn these selection masks back off and probably leave it just on point for now. You can leave that drawer open or close it if you want, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, an important technique to learn with curves is snapping to other points. Uh, snapping to the hull, um, or not the hull, the grid, as well as other points. So um, one of the things that we're going to do is try revolving a surface. And I think what I want to do here is... I go to my layer, oops, let's turn on object mode and just select everything, highlight the dots layer, highlight the dots layer and add selected objects and let's turn that to a reference layer or a template layer rather. So if you've got any more selections left over, anything you can grab, just select it, add selected objects, and just keep doing that until you can't select anything else. These little pieces of text are objects as well. So I'm just doing that, and uh, I changed the layer mode to um, template right here. And if you want to turn the visibility fully off, you can do that right here. I'm just doing that. I put all those uh, objects in this layer to get them out of the way so I can do a revolution. So I'm going to do the revolution from the front view. I'm going to create a, another curve. It doesn't matter um, if you use, again, CV or EP. My personal preference is EP. And this is going to revolve around the y-axis, so the up and down axis. The first and last point has to be directly on um, x and z0. So by being in the front view, automatically it will be on z0. But <clears throat> if you start clicking and just making points, you know, you can get it again as close as you want. Um, and it's probably not going to be quite exact. It'll be a little to the negative or a little to the positive. So uh, what you want to do is use grid snap and you can turn that on right up here. These are your different snap options. This is snap to curve. 
snap to point. Those are the only ones you really need to worry about right now. And um, I kind of like using the keys better than using the status line. So I'm going to use, instead of clicking this on and off, I'm going to use the X key, which will toggle it on while I'm holding down X. And I find that a little bit more convenient. So the first point that I put down, I want to hold down X or turn on grid snap and that will ensure that my point is on the grid where an intersection happens. And then what I want to do, if you can imagine a goblet or a vase or something in profile, or in other words, something that it's like it's sliced, it's got a slice out of it. So you've got a profile view that we're going to um, revolve. What we want to do is create the points that describe that profile. So I'll put a point out here. I'm going to use grid snap just to kind of make it a little a little more tight. So I've got kind of a top lip going and then I can stop using grid snap here. And I'll kind of come down to the bottom of the flask here turn grid snap back on. Now this kind of went under the bottom which is not quite desirable but we can fix that with the uh, by editing the curve later. So and then that last one is especially important to have the grid snap on. So I'll go back to component mode and um, I can add a point by clicking and dragging if I need to add any points. You can um, just create that point and I thought it was enter but at any rate you can you can manipulate these points so um, let me try this control vertices or um, uh, edit points are just, it's the difference between the CV and the EP curve. So right now I'm using control vertices like it's a CV curve. And I'm just reshaping this profile so that I've got something resembling this, the edge of a flask or a bottle or whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not really concerned about that right now. this I can move it up a little bit so I get a little bit more of a straight kind of there we go go back to edit points if you like edit points better edit points might make a little more sense to you since they're right on the line and it describes more specifically what the um, what it is you're manipulating in that way So anyway, you get the idea. Uh, let's go back to object mode. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to revolve it. Uh, and I want to say before I revolve it, the start and end point where you begin and end with this curve matters. I can never remember if I'm supposed to start at the bottom or the top. So. I started at the top and went down. We're going to revolve this and see if we end up with an inverted surface or a correct surface. Uh, if we end up with an inverted surface, we can take the original curve and just um, flip it and, and that'll work. So if you end up with an inverted surface, keep that in mind. So, um, but let's go ahead and do a revolve and that is under, I got to the animation menu somehow. Let's go back to the modeling menu and I'm going to go to surfaces revolve and I don't need any options really I'm just going to click revolve and that is the correct surface so this is what that curve looks like when it's revolved you can see that it has um, it has the hull like like the curve but it's just been rotated 360 degrees 
with surfaces put in between. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and delete that for the moment. And the curve is left over. If that's left over, just delete that too. And I'm going to turn off the template on the dots layer. So click it twice, it'll go T, R, and then there will be nothing in that box. Um, so I just wanted to show you some snapping before we move on. Just go to create whatever kind of curve you want to do. And on the snap here, I've got the choice of grid, curves, points, uh, and I, surfaces I think should be on here somewhere. Nope, no surfaces. Okay, curves and points. Let's go with that for now. And if I snap to curves, what will happen, watch down here while I'm going to lay this down is it's going to automatically put it on another surface, so on another curve. And with that off, that should, that just goes anywhere. It doesn't look like it snapped to the curve. Let's try points. You can use this tool to turn the curve tool back on. So yeah, you can see as I'm going to place this point, it's going to automatically snap to an existing point that's already out there. So I guess, okay, so I was thinking these are considered s curves, but um, they're not, they're considered surfaces. But you can see how the snap to point works here. Uh, just experiment with this and get a feel for how the snapping works. Let me see if I can find that. There should be a snap to surfaces, I thought. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted. Try that one more time here. Okay, see down here where the where the point is trying to sit. You can see it moving along the surface of that of that um, that little plane there. So what you want to do to make that happen, it's it's called snap to surface in your tutorial, but that does not exist anymore apparently. What you want to do is select the object that you want to snap to a surface and choose make object live. And I would guess that that does more than just snap to surface. Um, but I'm not quite sure what. So we'll come back to that. Um, experiment with that for a bit and start a new scene when you're done. Uh, go ahead and pause this while you play with that for a bit and then start a new scene. And you do not need to save this. I'm going to click Don't Save. go to my four panel view here and I'm just going to expand the front view and I'm going to create another curve to revolve. Um, doesn't matter if you use the CV or the EP. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to try to make something a little more like a vase. So, And I will again use the X to um, snap to grid. Now a vase should be hollow, um, so that is going to look like, let me 
see if I can find a good example of what that profile curve looks like. So if you just wanted to do the outside, that works fine, uh, which probably is fine for this uh, exercise. But I'm going to have it um, show an inside as well. So I'm going to do the snap to grid. I'm going to hold X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, just two units above the floor. And I'm going to sweep out a vase. And then I'm going to come back down here right on the floor. And we'll end up with a uh, kind of a bowl, in other words, a hollow vase. So I'm going to give it a few clicks to... Uh-oh, I lost my start point. Start that over. And if you want the line to be a little more straight, just give it a few extra clicks on along the grid lines here. grid snap on and press enter now I don't like that little bump in the bottom there as always you can just go into component mode and very easily just edit any imperfections that you don't like it's not a big problem so no reason to panic and in fact I think maybe that's just a tad on the thick side so as long as this one stays on the X, uh, I'm sorry, on the Y, right directly on the Y origin, it's fine to move it up and down. Um, if you get this point or the last point off the origin by a little bit, uh, it's going to either leave a hole or an overlap in your vase, and that is not what you want. So you're going to end up with bad geometry doing that. Um, so. Just kind of doing a few little tweaks here to even things out a tad. It's probably fine the way it is. Um, and we can go ahead and revolve that. And that is black, which means it's inside out. So um, you can see also it's kind of glitching as you rotate around it. So that means your surface is inside out. Your uh, your Blah, 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 blah. your curve needs to be inverted. So I'm going to go to my outliner and I'm going to select the original curve. Let's keep in the habit of renaming too. Let's call that face. You can leave this curve one or just like vase curve one if you like. Something to indicate that it's <clears throat> the curve. So if you do end up with this inverted surface like this, select the original curve and go to curves uh, do, 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 all the way at the bottom, reverse direction. So it's just as simple as that. And now we've got the correct geometry. Now um, I'm going to show you the history here. Window, General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy. We'll go with that. And that should show... Let's try another one. General Editors, Hypergraph, Connections. There we go. That's what I was hoping to see. Something with a little more... <coughs> um, a little more detail. So, you can see how we started with the curve. We put that through a revolve, and that created a surface called Vase. And then it plugs into this thing called Initial Shading Group. Don't worry about that. That's just a Maya default thing. These three are the ones that I'm interested in right now. These are all connected by history. Uh, that means that they have connections with each other. What one does affects everything down the chain. So, for example, if I select the curve 
and if I go ahead and go into component mode I will select edit points this might be um, a little tricky to understand at first but if you move these edit points you do anything to this curve at all the vase is going to respond by updating automatically the reason that's happening is because of this right here these nodes are connected so the curve feeds into the revolve and the revolve happens according to where the curves points are so this surface can be changed on the fly as long as the history is still connected. This vase has an inside too because of the way I built that curve. Uh, if yours doesn't, it doesn't probably really matter, but um, I, do like, I do like the idea of having a full vase and so if I wanted to edit the inside I could do the same, although it'd be, it's a little tricky to be honest. Um, so now I want to select the vase shape and I just want to show you a uh, couple of shortcut keys. One, two, and three are just resolution for the NURBS curves. That kind of looks like it's glitching. I might have folded some geometry in, inside of itself and turned something inside out. If you notice glitching like this right here, this is an indication that there could be something wrong with your geometry. Um, I'm not sure, like maybe if I undo the tweaks I just did, maybe it'll get better, I don't know. There could be nothing wrong with it at all. Remember, if it looks fine in the render, that's what counts. What the render looks like is what it really looks like. Uh, but anyway, the um, resolution of your NURBS can be defined with the one, two, and three keys. So you can view um, your NURBS at the lowest possible res resolution, which makes them look like polygons, in between or higher resolution. Um, this does not affect the way that they render. So um, that is everything you need to know about revolutions. And we're going to move on to, um, oh, no, it's not everything. OK, there's one more thing. Let's do a new scene. We'll move on after this. Let's see if I can make this happen. Sometimes I get good results with this, sometimes I don't. I'm going to show you how to make a much better table. Let's not, let's, uh, we want to move away from primitive objects now. So um, that's the idea behind everything you're going to learn in Unit 3. Um, I'm going to use the Bezier curve tool. We're going to see how this works out. Uh, what I want to do is um, create a table profile and I'm going to revolve it. Uh, but I'm going to go into the options this time with the revolve and I'm just going to give it like four sides for a square table. You can also do um, uh, six sides or eight sides, whatever you want to do if you want to do some different shape tables. So same rules apply. I'm going to do the grid snap to start. And I'm just going to draw a table profile here. Um, and what I want to do is just create a nice looking profile for the table like that. Uh, this is just the tabletop, by the way. You can, um, you can do the table legs the same way that I'm showing here. Um, it's not the only way to do it, but these these definitely work. So um, let's go ahead and revolve that, but I want to go into Surfaces, Revolve, Option Box this time. And as always, Reset the Options, Edit, Reset Settings. Um, the axis is going to be Y, because we want it to revolve around the Y axis right there. And we are going to create a linear surface instead of uh, cubic. Cubic does more of an approximation between each one. Segments, how many sides do you want your table to have? We'll go with four and go ahead and revolve. We turned it inside out again, so let's go ahead and open the outliner. We 
windows outliner. Bezier curve, and let's go to curves, reverse direction. And there is a much better, not so primitive table, uh, tabletop, I should say. So um, you can you can do a lot more just with uh, just with Revolve alone, really. But um, with some of the tools that we're getting into, that I again uh, want you to learn how to move away from primitive objects. So um, see you in the next lesson.